This show is part of the Head Stuff Podcast Network. This episode of The G-Spot is sponsored by Playblue, Ireland's favourite adult store. Playblue.ie has a huge selection of adult toys as well as some deadly deals. There really is something for everyone, no matter what bits you have or what you're into. Check out Playblue.ie today. My guest this week is broadcaster and host of the brilliant flop culture podcast, Fanula J. Fanula is yet another gorgeous guest from Cork. I'm very proud to say that here at the G-Spot, the Cork Kerry relations are strong. I myself love her flop culture podcast and also bandwagons, which I've binged for hours, literally hours at a time. And I really like how Fanula is able to be very direct, no nonsense, straight to the point, which has made me laugh along many a time, but also well able to handle more sensitive topics. Speaking of which, in this episode, we do touch on mental health issues, depression in particular in our second dilemma, and a very brief mention of an emotionally abusive behaviour. So please feel free to skip that part if you feel you might be very sensitive to that topic right now. There are some support services, of course, flagged in the episode description. But also, don't worry, there are lots of lighter bits in the ep too. So as always, thank you for being here and enjoy the G-Spot. First of all, when I asked you to come on Sex and Intimacy podcast, how did you feel? Were you comfortable? Were you like a mm, bit resistant? Oh, like a little bit nervous, girls. I'm not yeah. going to lie. I feel like I, just as someone who used to be, I am still quite open on the internet, but yeah. there, I feel like I've pulled back a lot now okay. in terms of what I share. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, like, I think it's a good talking point and I feel like if I'm not going to be the person to talk about it and you, then, yeah. who, you know what I mean? I yeah. want to be able to open up for other people who kind of initially have that uh, reaction of like, oh, and like yeah. pulling away. Yeah, I know because there's definitely people I, I think that said no up front which is fine like I totally get it and then there are people that are like yeah sure absolutely but I feel like most people would fall in the middle mm. you know, they're like what's she going to ask me or what will I end up talking about and like it's not something it kind of depends on the topic doesn't it like if we're talking about body image and stuff it can be a bit easier mm. like a bit of an easier intro but when I just go straight to sex people are like oh, okay what like it's kind of like the unknown yeah. what's going to come up um do you grew up in Ireland, I'm mm-hmm. guessing, for your accent. Did. So did you get amazing sex education? No, <laughs> I didn't get what was it like? any sex education okay. from what I, from my limited memory as I'm aging rapidly. Yeah. Um, I mean, primary school, nothing right. as far, again, if my memory is correct, the, the girlies can correct me from my hometown if I am wrong. And secondary school, I'm pretty sure, was the same bar. I did biology for my leaving cert and I loved biology. Yeah. I loved getting to draw our little diagram of our sexual organs yes. girls we love it yes. but beyond that in terms of you know relationships practicalities sexual health yeah. any of that none zip yeah. zilch you're Cork Cork you're yeah. from Cork yeah and I'm from Kerry so I think though across Ireland like even in the cities and stuff I think it's in, in the 90s and, and backwards 80s, 70s whatever th- there was hardly anything mm. like it's so much better now I don't think I got anything in primary school at all mm. And like it's ridiculous because some people like get their periods in primary school. Yeah. And you know, be start especially now they have the phones and everything. Um, but secondary school, yeah, I think we just got a puberty talk. Yeah, I'm sure I probably got some equivalent. But again, as you're talking with periods, I remember even like when I got mine, it was because yeah. my mama told me yeah. a couple of years prior and it wasn't a massive conversation or whatever, but it was just, this is going to happen. Yeah. Chill for a while. Don't worry, mm. girl, but it's coming down the line. Yeah. There was nothing about it. In pri- again, with, with with the exception of like the teacher being like, there are pads here if you want them. Yeah. And then the curtain very quickly shut closed. You know <laughs> I what I mean? It was yeah. so narrow yeah which is very frustrating to look back on well it is and that's what I was going to ask you was there any point in your life where you kind of realized that oh shit we had no sex education like why wasn't this taught in school or you know because I remember it was me for it was my kind of early to mid-20s I was like wait I actually haven't a clue Mm. like even about contraception and stuff and the ins and outs emergency contraception consent was a huge one Mm. And that's when I kind of started to realise that oh, we, we were missing this huge part that we yeah. should have gotten. Was there anything like that for you or any point in your life where you were like, yeah, actually, we didn't get anything and we should have? College was obviously yeah. a huge 
point again because it's when you are generally you know you're going out you're wink wink having fun yeah Yeah. and I just felt like I kept being faced with situations even if they weren't personal to me but like stuff with my friends where they were you know the group chat is like full of this is happening what do I do or I've had this instance or trying to track your like and obviously like the whole thing of like pregnancy and the Mm. shame and stigma of getting pregnant around that age and Mm. like you're we're all actually trying to prevent it we Mm. don't really you're being fed information from one side that could potentially be incorrect or yeah I I found that was the biggest turning point for me because it was also like you are an adult at that point and you can yeah freely seek out the information but at the same time you're going into a world where, you know, you're getting access via the internet and, like, the internet is great. Yeah. The internet can also be massively unregulated Mm -hmm. and we're also now dealing with issues like misinformation Mm -hmm. and we were dealing with it even back then, you know what I mean? It's So that was also quite difficult. Yeah, and I think now there's so much information that... When I, like, I've been doing sex education for years now and I did a lot of years in schools Mm. and I went out and I was like, they're going to be teaching me. Like, they're not going to need this. Like, genuinely, I was going into the road being like, this will just be kind of like, you know, they'll have the basics and I'll just add on a bit or I'll answer their very specific questions. But they still, in the nicest way, do not have a clue. Like, Mm. they have a better clue about some stuff. But I think now, because there's so much information, and as you said, misinformation, like, they're as clueless, I feel, in a way, as we were. Like, they're just as confused. Mm. Um, And as as well with porn and and all of that. Not that porn is in itself a bad thing, like, but, you know, it's the accessibility to it and whatnot. Um, So, yeah, no, it has changed a lot. But I think... They are more clued into stuff about consent, I feel, which is a good thing. Yeah, I think Um, that's the biggest achievement. And again, and it's the one thing that I look back and when you see it kind of normalised in popular culture and stuff like that, I'm like, brilliant. But then to see the kind of same information still be totted out and it's be so... I think the issue is that, again, as you said, there's too much information. I think a lot of it is very one size fits all, which no girls yeah. especially what with what we know about sexuality and stuff like that yeah. it just doesn't apply and that was also think like obviously this isn't applicable to me because I am straight but I think about my queer friends my LGBTQ plus friends going through school like if we got next to if I got next to no sex education they got if it's possible in the minus, minus. of education yeah. you know what I mean and I've had to learn so much through them yeah. and they again t- thinking about their process of having to go learn things and stuff like again just yeah. frustrates me no end it is frustrating I'm glad it's changing mm. we still have a way to go and just to say that things are moving in the right direction mm. but there is a bit of resistance building as well and I think it's kind of if I were to guess I think it's linked to this kind of hysteria that's very much in the States Mm. but also in the UK as well over trans young people and that we're sexualizing young people and like this is so not what's happening at all. That worries me greatly because I just feel it's going to be two steps forward three steps back and people not recognizing that again for the the, for the majority of these cases, it's far right people trying to bolster a movement that mm. doesn't exist. The data isn't there to suggest anything about. And again, it's allowing people to live as they should want yeah, to. You exactly. know what I mean? It's yeah. and as you, it's the wrong people piggybacking on it to try and make a broader statement about something that again fundamentally isn't true. But that's it. And I had uh, a horrendous time recently on. Uh, what's it called now? X. I left actually. Now I hardly used it anyway mm. to be honest. I was more of an Instagram girly. But I had seen this though and I just remember being like just oh, did wanting you see to eat it? my own hands. Yeah, yeah just uh, seeing the reaction to it and just people <laughs> deliberately misinterpreting and like ju- again I don't want to say wanting to get offended about things because I don't think it's that and I do think yeah. I, I understand fear around children and being overprotective of your own yeah. children of course mm. but again just the lack of media literacy and how we're so quick to embrace, or sorry, not we, I don't want to speak for everyone, but yeah. how you have these factions of society who are so quick to embrace misinformation yeah. because it lines up with their mm-hmm. argument mm-hmm. and to see people like you, like yourself who are trying to do really good work mm-hmm. and break down stigma and break down barriers to education, get the brunt of it was, again, sorry, I feel like I keep frustrating myself saying frustrating, but it just is. No, it, like, is. It's, it is. Yeah. And it's like, how do you respond to it? Yeah. Because I remember talking to someone, I was like, I talked to a solicitor and I was like, what do I do? And just for anyone listening who's like, what are you talking about? Um, Just that I do, as I said, sex education workshop in schools. And what happened? What actually happened? Oh, yeah. So this group, 
and I'm not going to go into any names, obviously, yeah, yeah. but just this group, um, you know, you're, you know, you said very anti-trans, very homophobic, very anti, anti all the, anti the you know, yeah, those yeah. red flags um, had kind of deliberately, I think, you know, they'd taken screenshots from my website where there are pictures of sex toys and like more adulty kind of vibes to my website mm-hmm. because my website is more for my adult work, work yeah. for adults. But they had taken, um, you know, a screenshot of a testimonial from a school, which was written by a teacher, and they it was next to the picture of the sex yeah. toy. So it looked then like there was all these tweets that I was bringing around a suitcase of sex toys to schools, that I was uh, advertising a particular brand of condom mm. in schools, uh, whereas like paedophile groomer, all of this were thrown around, which but is that's outrageous. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. It's taking these sections to fit a narrative for them. Where yeah. It's like, okay, you're after taking two things and completely conflating them. Conflating them. To exa- again, fit your argument that yeah. is obsolete in the first place. It actually reminds me of, not reminds me because I was like, what age? But, you know, was it the 90s when there was this hysteria over um, heavy metal music and um, mm. video games? Yes. Was it? Yeah. And they were linking it to kind of school shootings mm. and that, which I'm not saying there's nothing ever linked there, but it was this widespread, again, hysteria. And I think like that's happening again, but it's regarding sex education and again, gender and all of this. I'm like, it's history repeating itself almost, yeah. just in a different way. It's like, we need to calm down. Yeah, <laughs> We need we to calm would, down. We need to read the research and calm down. We would be so much happier and so much more chill if we just came at things more openly yeah. and tried to put aside our fear and maybe que- maybe question our fear a little bit more yeah. as opposed yeah. to just immediately bowing to it because I think that's the issue for a lot of people. Yeah, because it is fear. Mm. that That's what it is. So speaking of coming at things more openly, we'll get into a dilemma. Yes. Um. So these dilemmas, obviously I've had hundreds if not thousands of dilemmas put to me either Instagram or in my client work or in smoking areas. That's one place oh, where is that a people. Big one? Oh, a big one. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, now I don't smoke as much anymore. Actually, I don't go out as much you were like, anymore. I can't, I can't be listening <laughs> to people anymore, so I have to give them. Up. Literally, I have to stop smoking. Um, no, I was. Uh, I just don't go out anymore. That's a whole other podcast episode. Here, same, I am so antisocial. Again, another podcast episode. But yeah, no, I'm, literally. Oh, what happened to us, Grace? Honestly, what happened to us? Like, I. It's embarrassing. Someone will come and visit us um, in the town we live in in Kerry, and they'll be like, "Where is good to go out?" And, and me and I. And they're looking at each other like, um, there is one pub, all right, we've been to. Like, it's we've been there nearly two. It's really embarrassing. Anyway, so I'll start smoking again and get more juicy. Stunning, dilemmas. yeah. <laughs> so this dilemma, and there's loads of alliteration here, um, is called Twin Troubles, okay? Oh my it's God, not yes. as porny as it sounds. I feel oh. like it sounds very, yeah. But, okay, it's, it is kind of a juicy one. Okay, so... I'm feeling incredibly stressed out. This is the beginning of the dilemma. So, dear Grace, I'm feeling incredibly stressed out about a recent discovery. I'm a 34-year-old Irish man in a new relationship and I'm definitely in it for the long haul. We are exclusive and have told each other we love each other and all of that. And it was all smooth sailing until last week. I've just met my new partner's brother, who also happens to be his non-identical twin, And to my shock, I recognised him straight away. We had sex a few times when I was in my mid-twenties. Your face is saying it all here. Yeah. So stay with us. He's met his his new partner's brother and he's just realised, actually, we've hooked up before. We've had sex before. So... It was a brief and casual sexual relationship and we both moved on without any hard feelings. But now that I'm in a relationship with his brother, I'm torn about whether or not to disclose this information. So on one hand, I believe in honesty and transparency in relationships and I don't want to keep any secrets from my partner. But on the other hand, I worry that telling him about my history with his brother could create unnecessary tension or even jeopardize our relationship. To make matters more complicated, his brother has made it clear that that he does not want me to tell him. He thinks we should just pretend it never happened, move on. But I'm worried that eventually could it eventually could come out one way or another and then it would be an even messier situation. I'm genuinely at a loss as to what is the right thing to do. Is it best to just be completely honest or will sharing this just cause unnecessary problems with a potentially long and happy relationship? So... Tricky one. Oh any any initial God. thoughts? Yeah, I'm dying for this person. Okay. I actually am. I I oh yeah. I yeah. literally worst nightmare vibes. Worst. Yeah, they're Skin twin call. as yeah. well. God yeah. love them like yeah. they're twin. Not yeah, and it's it, great. And 
Irish, it's in Ireland and it's, Ireland is small and yeah. look, these things, these things do happen. So yeah. how do you navigate it? Like, the thing is, if the sibling is essentially like, presumably kind of grand about it or like me or, you know, a bit indifferent to it and I said, I don't want my brother to find out. So like, yeah. We may just leave it off. Yeah. You're, are you not kind of off the hook in some senses? You know what I mean? And I, I, but again, obviously the dilemma comes in. You're starting a relationship. You think it could, it's obviously much more serious than whatever was going, whatever dalliance was happening there. Yeah. And you want to start it on the right foot and you want yeah. to be very honest. They're obviously blood related. You're going to be seeing them an awful lot. Yeah. Is the secret going to be eating away at you? Yeah. Would you feel better if you told them? Yeah. That's what you have to kind of ask yourself. Mm. Is it like, would I feel better knowing I was 100% honest but yeah. knowing that that could probably like I'm going to be honest I think that other brother would be like bye because I think I would yeah. I think I'd be like sayonara right. this is yeah. all mm. a bit too much I'd find mm. it quite hard to get over that's the risk you run by saying it or yeah. would is your happiness now too much to sacrifice yeah. especially given the other sibling has given you the get out of jail free card to be like I don't I don't want my sibling to find out about this it's not a big deal Yeah, it'll all be it, like should this relationship do the distance which I hope it does for yeah. you two lovely people Yeah, then you know like let bygones be bygones let shags be shags you know what I mean it was what it was you know you're on, <laughs> you're on a new path they're on a new path <laughs> it's grand no? yeah okay I definitely see that but I also I definitely like okay so I'm trying to think if my partner my new partner said to me <laughs> I don't have a sister so this doesn't really work maybe slept with my brother who knows right okay. so he had had a sexual relationship with my sibling years ago I don't I, it's really hard to imagine to be honest mm. um, I would be allergic I'm not going to lie I would <laughs> like I wouldn't be ha- obviously wouldn't be happy about it I would be allergic um, now it's he hasn't done it no one's done anything wrong no obviously but putting myself back in the shoes of, of the person who wrote the dilemma as someone who's very anxious generally speaking like I have anxiety yeah. and I sometimes I'm honest to a fault and I think for me you know that sentence of uh, I'm worried that it eventually will come out one yeah, way like, See, when you said that I was like ear, 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 ear. I feel like that's going to eat away that's, yeah. uh, it's already started to chip away at you so if that's the case if you think you might have a few too many shandies and be <laughs> like I shagged your mother like I took two Christmases <laughs> down the line yeah, yeah. then you need to say it now because it's way worse to hold on to it and then say, yeah. you either need to make the decision with yourself that it's never coming out ever and it's yeah. not relevant, which yeah. I wouldn't judge you for that. And I think a lot of people wouldn't. And yeah. I don't think you should let yourself be yeah. judged whatever decision you make. I think so. But I think there is, I think the, your partner would be a lot less understanding to be yeah. like, so we're three or four years into this and you you've been yeah. stewing on the fact that y- you and my brother were shagging. That's, yeah. that's nearly weirder than the act of shagging the brother itself. Yeah, you right. Know? Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. No, I know. I don't think, I... I wouldn't judge someone, as you said, for either decision. No. I really don't think there's a, there's a very clear It's cut tricky. Right like, yeah, around. I don't yeah. think... It yeah. depends on who you are as a person, fundamentally. Yeah. I think, you know, what I would be worried about, I suppose, is, you know, it could come out. And it, it's not even that it'll come out that you'll say it. What happens if, I don't know, you don't end up getting on with this sibling or there's some... If, if you're going to be with someone in a long-term relationship, you could be with them for years mm. and years and years. And s- you could have an argument with that sibling at some point or, or the sibling could have an argument with his current partner and throw it out there again some night after too many espresso martinis or whatever. Like, oh, I just couldn't. If it were me... So this is, I suppose, speaking as... You know, I'm always trying to find, right, this is Grace is just just a clueless person. And then Grace is a, a, a relationship and, and, and sex expert, I suppose, coach. I love how you're closing your eyes. You're like really getting yourself into I'm the just position like with, of... No, but it, it is actually hard because it's... Um, there are there's two sides mate no like the, it's very uh, standards uh, it is <laughs> giving you standards a small bit as well though you know what I mean so. it is it is I think what I would be again and you kind of said this it depends on the person I think you just have to think about I suppose what would you want in yeah. that scenario use that bit of empathy again you mightn't even know the answer to that actually a question for you on a side note what so let's just take aside siblings for a minute okay. so if I Okay, if you had a new partner and mm-hmm. they admitted that they had slept with your best friend, you're closing your eyes. Yeah, now, I'm imagine. trying to get into it now um, as well. 
How much would it bother you? There's no right or wrong answer here. How much do you think it would bother you? Um, I suppose it depends on the context, doesn't it? How long were they sleeping together? Yeah. Was it just once? Did you know? I think right now, at this point in my life, I don't think it would bother me that um, much. But yeah. I think if you were to yeah. ask younger Fanula, full oh, of raging, no. uncontrolled, untempered, internalized misogyny <laughs> and feeling competitive against women, yeah. I think I'd be like, yeah, we're oh, forget about it, whatever. Yeah. But, like, but again, I think people have different boundaries with these. Yeah certain types of things because I can imagine someone else sitting in this chair and then visualising that scenario where they've met a new partner and things are getting on great and then they yeah. turn around and they're like by the way shagged your friend before no mm. worries if not and mm. then automatically like steam coming out of their ears yeah. you know what I mean yeah. yeah I would have expired when I was younger yeah. I mean expired yeah truly like up in smoke I just I, the, as you said the misogyny was so deep but the insecurity as well uh, yeah, was and so it, yeah, deep yeah 100% same for me um Whereas, yeah, no, no, look, it is a tricky one. I think I'm leaning towards just telling them. Okay. Because I think we're all carried carrying adults, right? So if 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 you're if you haven't done anything wrong, if you're being honest enough to tell your partner because you believe they just deserve to know, let's just start out this relationship from a place of pure transparency, pure honesty. If that partner then makes a huge thing of it or brings it up every time you argue or just doesn't like process it maybe that's a sign that yeah. they're and I'm not I'm not it's normal for the partner to feel upset but again no one's done anything wrong yeah. so they kind of have to be an adult and kind of process it and not throw it back in this person's face yeah. every time they have an argument and if they did do that maybe that's a sign that like the emotional maturity is not yeah. quite there and that's not shaming that person again because I probably, I might throw it back once or twice. Yeah. But it is still in the heat of the moment maybe if things are really bad. But, you know, if my partner told me that, again, I'd be like, oh, this is shit. Mm. But thank you for telling me. Yeah. I think that would be me. Okay. I think I'm still going to go with don't tell That's them. fine. <laughs> so I I'm going to meet helped. the other devil on the shoulder and say, you know what? It's fine. I hope this really helped you um, decide. Yeah. Be like, <laughs> You've two options. You've two options. No? Well, there's, there's no, yeah. Yeah. There's no right or wrong. Two options. Both are correct. Yeah. Perfect. Because I do get the whole thing of like, it, it is irrelevant to this person. Like mm. this person clearly sees it as it was a brief thing. We've all moved on. And so does the person they've slept with. It's so hard because they're all, I don't have names for them. And, yeah. they, and they're all men. So I'm like, man one, man two, man three. Um, so it's getting confusing. But you know, they, they haven't, again, they haven't done anything wrong. And, you know, is it worth throwing away a happy relationship for if that, if that is what happened? Mm. But then if they threw away the, my argument again, if they threw away the relationship for that, are they the right person yeah, for you? no. Would they not work through it after initially expiring for a bit and yeah. just rotting on the couch and just and crying. weighing up what's important? And yeah, 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 and then exactly. Um, so yeah, I hope that uh, made it very clear for this person. <laughs> well, the good news is that no matter what you decide, we agree. Yes. Yeah. Two thumbs up. Okay. And also, sorry, just to mention on that point, when we have, uh, like, they haven't said they're gay, they could be bisexual, whatnot. But, you know, uh, these are all men involved in this situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. The pool is smaller. Yeah. And it is actually more likely that someone has slept with someone. Yeah, just even based on conversations I've had with my... Uh gay friends like it I know and again it's obviously going to depend person to person but like yeah. it's very common to have crossed paths with lots of people yeah. and it comes up in conversation and generally speaking for them it's not a massive deal yeah. obviously it's different it here depends. because you've a familial collect connection That's twin twin oh yeah um but Game yeah, maybe, okay, maybe you're swinging me over to my side again about having a good, honest conversation. No. I, okay, if you are going with Grace's tact, again, I will say, you need to do it now. Like, don't be sitting on oh it. Oh God, do it now. The longer, as I said, the longer you're sitting on it and the longer it goes on, I would be more on the partner side if they are even angrier that you've kind of sat in it and held it yeah. back. Yeah, do it now. Yeah. Do it now. I think there's a real, it's in every culture, but I think there is a real Irishness as well about avoiding... Difficult conversations. Oh, babe, yeah. Meet, meet your sister. I and hate it. I hate these, conversation. Yeah. I hate any... It's Oh, it makes us want to swallow our own skin. Like. Die, like. Um, and you hear of these secrets coming out at, like, weddings and yeah. funerals. And I'm always like, how the fuck has that not been discussed yeah. before the wedding? Yeah. Now, again, I'm honest to a fault. It, it gets me in trouble. I'm probably too honest. But I, I actually would pick that now. Mm. Then 
it exploding. Yeah. There's something exploding. I can sleep easy at night. Oh my night. God, yeah, don't be the gossip of the week. Oh my God. <gasps> yeah, because then, no, we're going way too far down yeah. the road now. Right, okay, read it back in. Um, okay, have we solved that? We'll, we'll move I on. I think so. <laughs> I think so. I'm happy with that. We've I'm happy with my day's work. <laughs> this show is part of Headstuff Podcasts. Here's another show you might like. Hi, I'm Gerald Farrelly. And I'm Neve Kavanagh. And we have been friends for a very long time. And we regularly solve each other's problems. And now we'd like to solve yours in our podcast, Agony Rants. It's a weekly show where we offer you unwavering support. It's true. And it's the place to go if you need a place to vent or to get thoughtful advice. It's a serious lawsuit waiting to happen. Now, Grode, there isn't a problem that can't be helped by having a comedian and a Eurovision winner dissected before your very ears. Agony Rants is 40 minutes with two friends who just want to listen to you. Neve wants to listen. I dip in and out. Agony Rants has a new episode every Monday and you'll find us wherever you do your listening. Picture it with me. You're on your back. You're in the missionary position as God intended. And you're trying to reach down and get a bit of clitoral stimulation in with your fave toy, but it's a bit bulky and there's not enough space between your bodies and you're trying to get the angle right and the logistics just aren't logisticking. Well, pause because I have the perfect toy to smoothly, seamlessly slot into any kind of sex you're having, solo or partnered. It's called the High Fly Finger Vibrator by Satisfier, and it is absolutely beloved by regular toy users, but it's also especially popular with beginners. It's made of that lovely, super soft silicone and the ergonomic design is so clever. It slots neatly and smoothly around your finger so you can just focus on gliding the vibrations wherever your hand desires. Get 10% off yours today with the discount code GRACE10 at playblue.ie. Enjoy! This one is a, this one is difficult now, and I think a lot of people will relate to it actually. So it's desire and depression. Okay, so hi, I am feeling overwhelmed, and this person who's feeling overwhelmed is twenty seven year old, twenty seven years old, and they identify as female. Um, So I'm feeling overwhelmed by the strain that my partner's depression has put on our relationship. So for almost two years now, my partner has been struggling with depression. And as a result, his libido has plummeted. I love that language. Sorry, I just love the, it's so poetic. Close of. I'm not even being funny. I actually love people that just use like really, really strong language. Okay, so his libido has plummeted. So it really has gone down the drain, obviously. Mm. Um, He acknowledges that he needs help and has promised to seek treatment, but he has hasn't taken any concrete steps to address his mental health issues. Meanwhile, our intimacy has taken a back seat and I miss feeling close and connected to him. Sex simply does not happen at all. And even though I was very empathetic and patient for the first few months to a year, I'm really starting to struggle with these changes in our relationship. I want to be supportive and understanding, but I'm starting to lose hope that anything will change. I really felt this. Yeah. We are stuck in a cycle. We will end up having an argument. I say that something needs to change. He promises to seek help. I get my hopes up and then nothing happens until a few weeks later when we will inevitably have pretty much the same arguments again. I miss the physical aspect of our relationship and I worry about the long-term effects that his depression and lack of intimacy are having on both of us. He's still loving and caring in other ways, but it is beginning to feel more like a friendship due to the lack of sex. I don't want to give up on him and I don't want to seem cruel, but I also don't want to sacrifice my own happiness and well-being indefinitely. I feel that this should be the time when I'm having lots of sex and exploration while I'm young. How long should I continue to wait for things to improve before considering ending the relationship? It's a really oh, tricky one, isn't it? Oh my it? God. Okay. And obviously we cannot give a specific time frame. No. Especially because there's <clears throat> no kind of time frame for this kind of issue that's been ongoing. I will say there are kind of two issues at play here yeah. and it's that the it's not just that your partner's going through something and you're trying to deal with the yeah. af- like the like how that's affecting your relationship and mm. the lack of sex and intimacy and stuff like that. It's the fact that your partner seems resistant or maybe has no motivation. Stuck. And is stuck and can't help themselves. That's yeah. what makes it a lot trickier, yeah. I would say. I agree. 
I that's what I was really feeling from this is it's not necessarily the depression itself. Mm. And I do see the empathy and the love and, you know, this person obviously really cares yeah. about their partner. But the frustration, your favourite word that you were using earlier, the frustration is there. Mm. Like, where was it? Like, he hasn't taken any concrete steps. And you know that, like, being stuck in a cycle. Mm. You know, we always say that if it feels like a cycle, something needs to change. Yeah. Because cycles in relationships where there's an argument over a specific topic, it usually blows up. And then there's crying and there's hugging and there's whatever there is and there's kind of this closeness again and there's hope. And then if nothing happens, it just happens again mm. in a few weeks, a few months. And it's like, how many times do you repeat the cycle? Yeah, It's tough. It's really hard. And we don't know what's going on with him. We don't have his side of the story. Yeah. Essentially. Um, but just to say straight off, I just really empathise with her because I think we talk thankfully so much more openly about mental health yeah. now but there is that side of it of the other person in the relationship that often isn't discussed mm. because and rightly so we're so focused on the person who is depressed or really anxious and really needs mental health support but there's a whole other person there that's like so close to them and is struggling as well and I think we could do with a little bit more conversation on yeah. that side yeah do you know and as someone who has been in the position of the person with depression yeah. and kind of feeling that libido mm -hmm. not being, but all, and even just separately feeling being in a cycle of, I don't know how to help myself. I don't, yes. like, I just don't. Yeah. Like, there's nothing to say. And again, this isn't probably going to help the person who has sent this in. Like, I know they know this. He probably does want to get help, yeah. but is stuck, as you yeah. said, you use the word stuck. Mm -hmm doesn't know how to make the steps, whatever. Again, that doesn't make it less frustrating yeah. for the other person mm. in the couple. I don't know. And I would also say she talks about, you know, uh, feeling like she's giving up whatever and doesn't want to give mm. up. I think you've put already put in a huge amount of effort. Yes. I'm sure you already have been hugely supportive mm. in like saying you'll support them through mm. help or whatever else. I think you've done a lot mm -hmm. to this point. Mm. I think if you do choose to, we'll say, leave the relationship or this really is something that you can't get past yeah. or you go to the person again one last time and say, I have to be really upfront here. Mm. I'm kind of reaching my end point with this situation mm. and it's not your fault. I'm not assigning blame to you, but like, I know what I need. Yeah. Can we do anything? And mm -hmm. that person is still like, no, or is acknowledging that like, look, I'm stuck in this place mm -hmm. now. I just can't see for see the way through. Yeah. If that person then makes the decision to be like, okay, I'm out. That's not them no. giving up. And I think you no. need to be a bit kinder to yourself, more empathetic. Yeah. Talking yeah. about that. You're not selfish for wanting intimacy. And I know you'll probably say, and there is an argument, obviously you could be intimate in other ways. And mm, yeah. I don't know if you've tried that mm. or like you've gone down that. Like, I don't know wh what kind of walls you've hit, but mm. it sounds like you've hit most of them, if not all of them, even the way you're describing it as a friendship. Yeah. So I'm thinking is maybe now the time to call it off and look mm. there's nothing to say then you know breaking up a relationship who's to say you don't meet up again in six months and yeah. things are things are radically different mm. I'm not sure they would be or whatever yeah. but again it doesn't have to be this permanent break either but maybe yeah. just for your own sake it is a thing of okay I need to draw a line under this for myself and yeah. possibly for you because maybe I don't know like I just think you need this space to figure yourself out and me kind of being on your back talking about my own needs maybe is frustrating that person with yeah. the depression. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's it. No, I, I agree. I think, you know, obviously the writer, like her mental health is starting to suffer. Yeah. And I'm not saying she's getting depressed now, but obviously she's in a very difficult place mentally as well. And like one thing I've learned is that I've been maybe closer to even though I've had depression, anxiety, um, my libido has always stayed very strong of, of all the things. The other things drop off, the appetite, everything. But for some reason, the libido is there. That happens for some people. But I've been on kind of her end of things where I'm like, I can't, like, I can only bring you so far. Yeah. And you need to want to get better for yourself. And I know that's really hard to say, but you need to find that reason somewhere to get better if it's going for therapy, if it's going to the GP, if it's trying medication. Like there's so many things that suit different people, right? So, you know, unless this person, unless he, it is a he, isn't it? Yeah. Unless he ultimately makes the choice himself 
to get better. And I'm not like you decide, oh, I'm just going to get better. But, mm. you know, just take a step. You can't make him. Yeah. And I think it's fair to kind of have some level of time limit on it. Yeah. Like, I don't know how long. OK, so sorry, she said two years. I don't know how long have they been together. Sorry. But this has been going on for about two years. Um, yes. OK, so two you, years is a long time. It's a long, long time, especially. Time. Uh, it's, it's a long time at any time, but I think at 27. It mm. just feels like maybe even, I don't know why, maybe we glamorise the 20s way too much, but like, you know, it, it is a long time mm. in a young person's life. There's a lot that changes, I feel, in a year at, at, at that age. I'm not, I hope that's not ages to say that. Um, it can apply to any age group. But yeah, I think maybe looking at, you know, say by the end of the summer or whatever it is, that if if there's still no change, like there's been no no steps on his part to to do anything, then maybe that's time you just have to, you have to make the decision. Yeah. And it's not an easy decision, but that's why I hate the term <laughs> unconditional love. And I go off about this on social media. I think it's really romantic. I think the idea of it is lovely. I think it's bullshit. Mm. I think you can love someone extremely deeply and care for someone and it can feel unconditional. But ultimately, love is conditional. It kind of has to be. Now, with the exception of, I know, kind of, parents and children and there is more like visceral yeah. love that's nearly rom- biology driven yeah romantic love I think is yeah it yeah. should be con- if it's unconditional and I, this is even outside of this dilemma it's it's just that that means there's no boundaries in place there's no looking at your own needs and wants that you're just going to stay with someone regardless of how that affects you and, and your life and your mental health and that's why I just what do you think? I don't know, unconditional? Yeah, you... no, I'd never really thought about it. But when yeah. you say it like that, yeah, I think it does kind of uh, offset the power balance immediately, like yeah. in some ways, because and but what and how people interpret, I, and I know they shouldn't, but like people's interpretations of unconditional love yeah. can be very different. So well, that's it. Yeah. And yeah. sure, like whoever you're getting involved with, even if they're all as into you as well, like surely their interpretation of it is going to be different to you, you know. And as you yeah. said, fundamentally, we're all so different as individuals. Yeah. Like it's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like unconditional. I don't know. I, yeah, there's just something about it. And this dilemma kind of reminded me of it, mm. where it's like, I just kind of feel there's a bit of sense of shame coming off her. I It kind of strikes me as, that I feel like she's made the decision in her head, but is looking for permission yeah. to oh make my God, it. Yeah, and yeah, I can yeah, only yeah. imagine, maybe she's spoken to other people and they've been like, yeah. This is going to be a hyperbolic reaction, but you know where they've been like, "You're lousy." He's going through whatever. Like, yeah. you can't, Jesus, you can't leave him now. He's in the, the pits, whatever. And like, I do get that, but yeah. also it's not like it hasn't been a short amount of time. Two no. years is a long time. Yeah. And as I said, it from the way she's written it, and maybe I've taken this up wrong. It seems like she's made the decision, but it's the shame and the stigma yeah. and guilt is holding her back and that's understandable but yeah it can't and it shouldn't fundamentally yeah no I think there is stigma that word 100% I think that is there because I'm just looking even you know she says you know I don't want to give up on him even that language mm. like give up you know but there's you're a not real, giving, no you're not you're not giving you're up not. and you're not even like giving up on the relationship yeah. like you're making a decision yeah, exactly that yeah, is yeah. ultimately going to be better for you yeah and it could end up being better it for could, him it could and that's what I was thinking as well that it might actually, again, it might be sometimes the thing that someone needs the to be like, yeah. oh, I've just, this relationship now is over, nearly over. And, you know, I, I want I want more for myself. Like yeah. I want to be able to have a happy, happy healthy relationship where, whether with this person or someone else. Um, and, you know, even just the way she said, I don't want to seem cruel. That's something I hear a lot of, you know, I hear people all the time, mainly women, and they'll always be like, uh, I, I'm just not that kind of person or I'm just I'm not that girl that would do that with regards to different kind mm. of setting boundaries or blocking someone. Sometimes when I'm not again, this is more my personal life rather my I'm not there are my professional se- uh, sessions like you need to block someone. But, you know, Grace as a friend is like, you actually could probably do with blocking him. Mm. And she's like, that seems really harsh. That seems really cruel. I'm not that girl. I'm like, who is that girl? Yeah. What is that girl? What are you actually saying yeah. there? Because it sounds to me like it's more about other people's perception of you that you might be judged or shamed and you might be. Mm. But ultimately, that doesn't matter. They're not the ones in the relationship. Yeah. Like they're not the people in your shoes living that life. And, 
you know, only you can know when you've done enough, when yeah. you've given enough and it's not going anywhere. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, there's only so much, so, only so far I think you can take relationship. Yeah. Um, it could only be described as cruel as if you'd actually genuinely did cruel. something cruel if you yeah. were cruel yeah. in yeah. the act of doing it but you deciding yeah. to end the relationship isn't in itself inherently no. cruel you're no. just making a decision no yeah of course and I think and again, setting a boundary yeah I'm using maybe better language around that yeah. as you said making a decision and that's why I went off recently again about uh, the term failed marriage failed relationship I'm like why do we call it that mm. why is it a failed marriage okay fair enough they got married probably with the intent of being together forever or for a long time. But there was a reason they split up. It was probably a good reason. Mm. Um, is a marriage less of a failure if you stay in it and are miserable? No. How do you define that? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I hate that language and I just, I'm just i just sensing a little bit of it here. So I think yeah. you said at the start, be kinder to yourself. I would totally agree. Um, and look, you know this isn't happening in this case but it is something that comes up a lot that sometimes people will even like threaten to hurt themselves or whatnot if if you break up with them I've been in that position yeah, same. it is genuinely traumatic yeah. it's terrifying there's been stuff that's happened in my life and um, that is emotional abuse whether it's intentional or not right whether the person is kind of doing it in quite a mani manipulative way or they genuinely feel that way Yeah, that's not really the key point here it's that you know it, it's completely unfair yeah you know so I this hasn't happened in this dilemma but even just maybe as a forewarning just in case there was anything like that um you can only do your best to look out for your partner's mental health it ultimately is their responsibility yeah yeah it's yeah. a tough one isn't that yeah and I think there's a kind way to break up with someone hundred percent yeah there is have you ever had a cruel breakup? Shitty breakup? Have I ever had a cruel breakup? Or a nice breakup? I feel like I've had some, I sound like I've had a hundred relationships. I haven't. But I've had, my, my breakups have gotten more civil as mm. I've gotten older. I They were chaotic I've, when I was younger. I've <laughs> never been at, on the end of a cruel breakup. Right. Uh, but I've definitely been, I've been cruel yeah. in the way I've had. And again, so, again, I put that down to like, I was a, I was a teenager and yeah, stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. Not to make excuses, I could have handled situations yeah. uh, a lot better. But again, it is just remembering that you're not just dealing with your own feelings, you're dealing with um, with someone else's. Yeah. yeah, and this is why we need more sex and relationships education because we actually need to learn that stuff yeah. genuinely, like that interpersonal, like the empathy piece. Mm. Um, again, like even when we talk about setting boundaries, sometimes on social media, the advice is just so black and white. It's so kind of extreme at times. It's like basically... Cut, every, cut anyone off. Yeah, well, we're gone too far the other too way far. now where it's too like, far. Um, the only person you can rely on is yourself and you don't owe anyone an apology and it's like, no, sometimes you do. Yeah. Sometimes you oh, do, sometimes and that's, you do and that's fine and that doesn't make you a terrible person but yeah. like, sometimes we fuck up and you have to say sorry for things. But that's it. And sometimes you do owe people things and it, I think we've gotten into this thing where it's like people got very afraid to say no Yeah. and we were saying yes to everything just as this kind of, I was about to say this is kind of tangential but it's kind of not in some ways. No, it's not. You know, we're finding ourselves saying yes to everything and we we yeah. were locked in this thing of people pleasing and yes. going to things and saying yes to things and doing things that we actually didn't enjoy or didn't want yeah. to and now we're on the other way where it's like you don't ever have to do anything yeah. ever yeah. and fuck everyone it's like I, should yeah. we have met somewhere in the middle should we not I have met closer should. in the middle yeah. somewhere I think yeah because you could just cut yourself off completely yeah and that's not healthy no and that's not healthy either we need other people yeah. to survive we need yeah. it's the relationships we have that sustain us you look at the issues we're having now with loneliness and how it's yeah. affecting yeah. old people and not even just older people no. but people who are mm -hmm. shut off from society for a, a myriad of reasons mm -hmm. and how much mm -hmm. it affects them when they're not mm -hmm. you know like loneliness is killing people like genuinely 100% yeah 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 and the boundaries piece I think you mentioned there is really important because it's like you know I, I'm all for being more the, dare I say the word empowered because I think that word is just so overused but I'm all for being more empowered yeah. and have stronger language and, and just fucking standing up for ourselves yeah. basically all for it like I apologise for everything and I, I'm trying Same. not to as much just automatic it's mm. like a, it's like a, just part of my accent or part of my dialect sorry 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 um, I'm trying not to do that but sometimes you just need to say sorry I saw a post and it was like instead of saying this was actually, this rattled me. It was like, instead of saying, <laughs> I think sorry, I'm post. late, say, thank you for your patience. <laughs> and I'd be like, if someone is late, just 
fucking say sorry. You can't be doing that after two and a half hours late. Like that's That's a, American though. Yeah. I'm sorry. There's no way if you go I'm sorry, Irish people would be like, Do you hear your one? Yeah. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. We've been waiting an hour for yeah, her. Yeah, literally. No, I can't. Like I don't know. I don't know what it is. I actually did um when I was doing my sex and intimacy coaching training, uh, one of the lecturers, teachers, instructors, um, just just didn't believe in the word sorry. Like right. she would do okay. linguistic gymnastics, not to say sorry. And she just thought it was kind of a shame filled word. And I was like, this sounds more like a you thing. Yeah. Than a are thing, you projecting? Than a thing you, to be teaching everyone. Are you projecting a tinsy bit there. Yeah, it's there's something in that where and again with Irish people, like I love Irish people and I love our, our little ways. But we have an extraordinary talent of talking around stuff. Yeah. And dancing around it. Yeah. And we've so many, just Hibernian English is so like, so many sayings. We've 10 different ways to say it's raining. Do you know that kind of way? And sometimes we just need to actually just say the thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, that's just something I'm noticing at the moment with myself, but also with um, clients and people I work with. And you know the way you were saying uh, the people pleasing piece. I have to do an episode on that at some point or I yeah. have to de- the women I see and the resentment and the anger that is there underneath it all yeah. is absolutely volcanic <laughs> and rightly so mm. but like they are so afraid to be angry about anything mm. they think it's wrong or ugly or just I don't know what I'm trying to think of the word um just not womanly. It's yeah. not like a feminine not thing feminine, to be angry. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it is. Yeah. Probably we should be angrier. Yeah. It'd be healthier. Mm. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Um, because even reading this dilemma, like, I don't think she even uses the word angry, frustrated. No. Or anything. I, to be honest, there would be a piece of me that would feel that. As well as the empathy and the care and the love and all of that, there would be a piece of it be like, why won't you just please, please, please do something? I really want to be with you. I'm really trying. But, mm. you know, we're stuck in this cycle. And it's OK to have that part mm. and like give that part a bit of space. Do you know? Yeah, 100 percent. And I feel like maybe she feels like she can't she because can't. Yeah. obviously of the partner's dilemma and yeah. the guilt and everything else. And probably all those other external factors that you were talking about, especially yeah. women yeah. being ashamed about the being The carers, angry. the nurturers. Yeah. yeah, and that as well. You know, yeah. um, like when a woman you know, leaves her kids or family. It is treated so much differently than when a man leaves his kids or family, yeah. right? It's like, what? A woman leaving yeah. her? You know, it's, and I'm not saying anyone should leave their kids or family, Jesus Christ. But, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying that like, you know, we we don't get away with as much. No. And uh, it's just something that kind of popped into my head when we were talking about that, that like maybe, maybe for her in therapy in a year or two down the line, she'll be processing that kind of frustration. Just start screaming. And just start just screaming. Give you, let yourself do a big old scream in the car. Yeah, I like doing I that sometimes. That. Scream oh. under or into a pillow. Did you, um, were you at a break room recently? Am I imagining that? Rage room. Rage yes, room. I was. A rage um, room. In uh, Clondalkin. Because yeah. I remember seeing that and thinking of my, some of my clients, I'm like, I need to send them. It was so good and yeah. you can play, we couldn't because we were filming a piece on it but you can, and obviously issues it rights to music and whatever but you can play music right. while you're doing it. Ooh. So you throw on Olivia Rodrigo or whatever yeah. and you're bashing up printers. <laughs> I was going to say Metallica but yeah, it, Olivia or would whatever. work too. Like Anything it was, that just like, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, genuinely, That's I can't class. recommend it enough. Yeah, brilliant That's experience. I, um, I was angry about something the last day and I was out for a walk on the beach and I was just picking up stones and flaking them. Fair. Absolutely flaking them. And I was like, I never do this as a woman. I don't have a physical outlet for mm. like, and it wasn't anything major. I was just pissed off about yeah. something. Someone had really annoyed me. And I was like, oh, and I just felt it physically in my body. I was like, how do women get out their anger? Yeah, like exercise. But then what if you can't exercise? What if you're less yeah. able to whatever? I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, we need, I don't know. And like, I don't, I don't know. Government funded rage rooms, Yeah, exactly. Please. That's it. We do. I need to introduce it as part of my, you know, sex and relationship coaching service. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And I think it will really genuinely help people. I'm not just saying that from like either to flatter you or to, to, to like boost my own podcast. But when, when we've been thinking about this podcast... I did have the option of going down the route of, I know loads of sex experts. Mm. Like I know loads of amazing people in my field. You know, I could have interviewed all of them and talked about all this, you know, just the jargon and the psychology and this and that. But like, 
I think that's already being done and it's being done well. And I think actually what I prefer to listen to is just people coming at it from a bit more, bit like a bit less of a kind of, this is my job, this is my profession, I'm the expert. And a bit more like just kind of human mm. empathy piece, which yeah. I think you did perfectly. Thanks. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Not at all. Is there anything you want to plug? I've listened to, I listened to Flop Culture. We were on about that before. We started recording one of my favourite pop pop culture podcasts. You're coming on soon yes. at some stage. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Talking about one of the worst movies alive. We won't say what. Have you watched it? Yes. Since? Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to get into it. I can't that. believe I'll have watched it multiple times for the episode but because nobody nobody should have to watch it more than once. No, uh, <laughs> we had to reschedule where we still haven't done the episode, but I've watched it every time we've rescheduled. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm I don't so think, sorry. I actually genuinely don't think I can do it again. I think I just have to look up best or worst moments on YouTube. Yeah, and fair, just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I have a whole, like, I have 20 pages of like little scribbly oh, notes. Oh, unbelievable. No, it's a small notebook. We love 20 it. pages. We love a research guest. Yeah, yeah. so flop culture is yeah. all about our favourite flops. So yes. flop culture movie, TV series, album, maybe you feel affectionately towards, you have specific memories attached to it. People can go, I just like having chats with people. My parameters are very broad. And I also, flap is in a value judgment. We're all about yes. just enjoying culture for what yeah. it is, good or bad, everything in between. Yeah. Um, and we end up having great conversations. Mm-hmm. And I love it. It's my little tiny pink baby. I love it. It's great. I love it. And I love the pink as well. Anything pink I love. Okay, so thank you so much. Thanks for All right. A huge thank you to Playblue, Ireland's favourite adult store, for sponsoring this episode of The G-Spot. You can browse through their impressive selection of toys, lingerie and lots more sexy essentials at playblue.ie. This show is part of the Head Stuff Podcast Network, a hub for the creative and the curious. Shows are produced in association with Head Stuff and the Podcast Studios Dublin. Find out more or become a member at headstuffpodcasts.com.